He walked the rest of his street with his eyes fixed on the grainy black and white photograph of his sister and the word that had haunted him for three weeks. Missing. Until recently, he'd associated the word with minor misplaced things like his keys or his baseball glove. But now it described his sister. On her way to a piano lesson three weeks earlier, Megan had stepped off the porch, walked down the street, and never been seen again. She'd simply disappeared. In the first days after her disappearance, she was all anyone could think about. Her picture was posted on every storefront window and telephone pole within a hundred miles. County residents had united to search for her. They'd walked hand in hand across open fields, scoured deep woods, and walked door to door in distant communities hoping someone had seen her. Their search spanned days, weeks, But after three weeks, there was still no sign of Megan. And though no one said the words, people clearly had given up. Determined to find his sister, Noah began his own search and called upon his two best friends, Ella and Richie, to help him. For the most of their lives, Ella, Richie, Megan, and Noah had been members of a club called the Action Scouts. Their club was like most others. They had a fort, a name, secret passwords, and private meetings, What made the Action Scouts special was that it was their club, based on their unique friendship. So powerful was the Scouts' friendship that they believed they were inseparable. And Noah, Ella, and Richie hoped this would bring Megan home. It didn't. Now, three weeks after Megan's disappearance, Noah found himself gazing at her picture as he walked across his backyard. Minutes ago, he'd found the flyer in the street. It had probably blown off a telephone pole. Meg, where are you, he whispered. Then snapped the edges of the flyer. Noah gave it a final look and stuffed it into his pocket. He stopped in front of the big oak tree in his backyard. Nailed to it was a weather-beaten sign with fading paint. He'd made it years ago with Megan, Ella, and Richie. The sign read, You are now entering Fort Scout. Do not enter. (laughs) It might as well have read, Welcome, now go away. He stared high into the tree. Twenty feet above was Fort Scout, set in a tangle of tree limbs. It was the most elaborate tree fort he had ever seen. It had a roof, two doors, and four windows. It had three points of entry, a ladder, a rope, and a spiral staircase that circled the trunk and ended at a hole in the floor. Long rope bridges connected the fort to far-off trees. Noah climbed the stairs and stepped into the fort. His footsteps thumped on the wooden planks. The fort was filled with stuff. Tables and chairs and games and jackets. A pile of equipment lay on one of the tables. Tools, batteries, and strange electrical objects that looked like metal bugs. These belonged to Richie, a whiz with gadgets. He was always working on what he claimed was high-tech spy equipment. Noah stared out the window at the empty gray sky and heard nothing but the sound of the wind. He headed across one of the rope bridges across a lookout platform. The bridge creaked and swayed. On the platform, he looked toward the Clarksville City Zoo. Two elephants, a giraffe, and a tiger were in his view, sleeping in their compounds. But mostly the zoo looked empty, empty and sad. Looking down on the zoo from the height of the platform made Noah think of the night Megan had insisted she'd spotted monkeys on the rooftops. He remembered standing beside her, scanning the darkness for a sign of anything unusual. He'd seen nothing, certainly no runaway zoo animals. From that time until the day she disappeared, Megan had acted differently. She'd been distant and preoccupied, like a person with a secret. Sometimes Noah had weird thoughts. Sometimes he wondered if the zoo had something to do with her disappearance. Megan, after all, had claimed she'd spotted animals escaping. Maybe she had. Worse, maybe she wasn't supposed to. Perhaps she'd put herself in some kind of danger just by seeing them. Could the animals have come for her? Kidnapped her? Because something bad was going on at the zoo? (laughs) These were ridiculous ideas, and no one knew it. He was stressed, and the stress was making him think crazy things. Still, if these ideas were so crazy, why did they keep coming back? Noah looked away from the zoo. He wondered where Megan was, if she was okay and whether she'd ever make... He bumped his toe on the short flagpole that lay on the platform. 
The flag was red with large white letters, A and S. He picked it up and held it in the air. The Action Scouts distress flag, he muttered. Two years earlier, Richie's grandfather, an Army veteran, had given the kids the idea of making distress flags. He'd said that if the scouts became separated, they'd need a way to communicate trouble, and the distress flags had been his answer. He talked Richie's grandmother into making one for each of the other children and one for Fort Scout. Noah fitted the pole into the spot of, in the tree. The flag waved, and the A and S rippled in the breeze. He looked across his yard and into the street. A part of him hoped Ella or Richie would see the flag and come running, if not Ella or Richie, then someone, anyone, who could help him get back, get back his sister and his old life. <clears throat> Noah waited almost a half hour. No one came. Finally, the cold got the best of him. He climbed down from Fort Scout, entered the house, and went to bed early. As he lay beneath the covers, he imagined Megan, her warm smile, and her sisterly love. Eventually, 